Let's start with question time, Andrew. Opposition went in hard at Scott Morrison and Greg Hunt over the government's handling of vaccine rollout in Commonwealth aged care facilities in Victoria. Now, it's important to note Victoria is unusual in the sense it has uh, state government run uh, aged care homes and then private providers which fall under the umbrella in a regulation sense of the Commonwealth. How much do you think the federal government is exposed on this? Well, Scott Morrison clearly thinks he's not exposed at all, Peter, because that's what he told the Coalition Party room. He said there are people seeking to make this Victorian outbreak about the Commonwealth Government in terms of vaccine rollout and quarantine and, I guess, aged care and the like, and he says it's not working, people aren't buying it. So he seems very uh, confident. Josh Frydenberg is reported to have told the party room that the Victorians attempted a desperate smear on him in terms of JobKeeper assistance. So I think they're pretty relaxed at the moment, to be honest. Having said that, wasn't that exchange between Brendan Murphy and Scott Morrison interesting? Talk about shades of Sir Humphrey and Jim Hacker in different forums having a crack at each other, essentially throwing each other under the bus... He has this tendency, Scott Morrison, to not come out with the best lines at times, and that really fed into the Labor narrative of him seeking to deflect blame or responsibility. Whether uh, Brendan Murphy said those words first, this isn't a race, Scott Morrison used that phrase on three occasions. He has his own mind, mm. so he really needs to take responsibility for his words. But overall, the only thing that will make this a real problem for the federal government in terms of the aged care would be deaths would be a major outbreak, not two or three cases in one home. And so for the moment, at least, I think they're pretty relaxed about it. I want to get to Josh Frydenberg in, in a moment, but, you know, there was a lot of clarity today about genomic testing from the Victorians in the press conference. And basically all of these cases, including the cases in the aged care home, the worker in particular, they go back to this one man from South Australia, a Victorian who returned home. Now, for the life of me, if the contact tracing is so good, how could they not get a handle on just one infected person crossing the border? I think that's the flaw in the attack from the Victorians. Let's go to Josh Frydenberg. Very pointed attack uh, at him today from Labor's Treasury spokesman Jim, Jim Chalmers over the lack of Commonwealth assistance or further assistance to Victorians. Have a listen. Victorians wouldn't be locked down today if it wasn't for the Morrison government's failures on vaccines and quarantine. Why has this Treasurer refused to provide any additional support to small businesses and workers hardest hit by these failures? What kind of Victorian abandons Victorians in their hour of need? Now, I've done a fair bit of radio in the last couple of days. We had a lot of talkback callers coming in since this announcement uh, that Victorians would only get state aid, not federal aid. I have to say, even Victorians calling in, Andrew, are saying they do not want uh, the federal taxpayer uh, to bail out, bail out a bad government down here in Victoria. Is this... Is this hurting the government again? I mean, who's winning the PR war here? I think, again, it's not a major issue at the moment. Again, just like my last answer, Peter, it depends what happens. If, it, if you were to see an extended lockdown, this will start to become an issue for the federal government. So on both issues, they've kind of got the warning signs there. They don't always follow those warning signs. Half the time it's about getting through the day, it seems to me. But you can see a situation where the international borders open, for example, there are a need for longer lockdowns or restrictions, then the federal government will be called upon for assistance. I think Josh Frydenberg's awake to this, but their view, the government, is we're not going to put in place assistance or a JobKeeper-type scheme uh, to help business out, to help, to help workers out when there's a seven-day lockdown or a three-day lockdown. And we're not going to encourage mm -hmm. state governments to lock down when they shouldn't be over two or three cases, like has happened in Western Australia, South Australia, Queensland, uh, with some form of assistance. So it's a balancing act, but they'll have to keep their eye on it in a political sense and also an economic sense. And sadly, it looks like Melbourne's susceptible. That could be the climate. That could be people close to each other. More importantly, I'd say that's the contact tracing is better, but it's not where it should be. And so I don't think this will be the last outbreak in Melbourne, sadly.
All right. I want to get your take. You're in Canberra on the ground. I want to get your take on the fallout from uh, the ABC Christian Porter defamation action um, falling away yesterday. I mean, the ABC's warned all of its sort of star reporters and others and not to go out there claiming that they have won. Green Senator Larissa Waters, she's pledging to introduce a bill uh, to establish a, a commission of inquiry into the allegations, historical allegations against Christian Porter. He said he's going to run. Do you think Labor will support this commission of inquiry? And do you think anyone's got power over these ABC journalists and the way they use Twitter in a very political, partisan way? Well, what you've got here is a war between certain ABC journalists and the federal government. And there's uh, a depth of feeling on, on both sides, which uh, I think can make everyone uncomfortable. And uh, it's called a settlement. I mean, it wasn't a settlement. They were taking pot shots at each other straight away. And, yeah, George Christensen got up in the party room today and got applauded when he had a go at the ABC and said, what side of Butro is the chair doing to rein this in? I mean, some of this stuff on mm. social media, I think if you did a, a private sector outlet like News Corp, the bosses would be holding you to account. Um, mm. And I think there have been attempts at that at the ABC. And I think, you know, there's often call with social media to think a bit about impulse control, Peter, frankly. Um, there is a settlement. Mm. Uh, there are journalistic means to pursue stories. Uh, why have a crack on... So why, why take it personally and have a crack on social media? is my point of view. If you start taking things personally, and that's whether you're one of these politicians or you're me or you're an ABC journalist, you've lost the plot. You know, you've got to deal with these or things you could, Or you could just be like me and you could just not even have a Twitter account because it's a sewer for the left. <laughs> i let them all just go at each other. Hey, breaking news, breaking news in the last hour, and Immigration Minister Alex Hawke, what can you tell us? Well, it seems there's moves afoot to suspend his branch from voting. And, look, I mean, I've been hearing now for about a week that there are attempts to roll uh, Alex Hawke in his pre-selection of Mitchell, that he might not have the numbers, that he, there's a veteran standing against him. I was going to do some work on it once all these other stories are out of the way, Peter. But <laughs> I, I am operating uh, under the basis that uh, Scott Morrison would never let Alex Hawke, uh, an, an ally of him and a minister, get rolled in a pre-selection... That may be uh, poorly founded, but I, I'm, I, I, that's my first instinct. And so even though there are forces in the right and the left who may believe that they have the numbers and are able to roll him, I think Morrison would prevail upon the state director and certain power brokers to attempt to save him in that situation. But mm. I will say watch this space because that sort of action from the Prime Minister may be required. He's said to be under some threat in terms of his pre-selection, Alex Hawke.